Lake Kismet is located between Buffalo and Sheridan, Wyoming. The lake measures now 7 miles long, 2 miles wide, and the max depth is 120 feet. This was even before the enlargement 60 years ago. Lake Desmet was the largest natural lake in northeastern Wyoming. Lake Desmet was named after Father Jean Desmet, who introduced Native Americans to Christianity. A wide variety of wildlife is sustained by this lake. The most common fish are crappies, walleyes, and trout. Lake Desmet holds a lot of geological features as well as fossils and petrified wood, which litters its shores to show its prehistoric past. Although Lake Desmet is now is known for its fishing, boating, and picnicking in the summer months, and ice fishing and snowmobiling in the winter months. The lake holds a darker side. The Native Americans believe that the waters have healing powers and produce visions. However, they refuse to camp by its shores. The Sioux tribe has a legend that a young brave turned against the love of his life because he was overpowered by the charms of a water maiden rising from its depths. His intended wife-to-be was so distraught by his projection he subsequently drowned herself in that very lake. Her father, the tribal chief seeking revenge, swiftly administered justice to the unfaithful young man in the darkness of the windy Wyoming nights. His spirit supposedly wanders around the shore bemoaning the loss of his Indian maiden. However, there is something that makes more people nervous while fishing out at the lake than ghosts. Edward Gillette was the first to document the creature in his book Locating the Iron Trail wrote in 1925 chronicling the tales and observations surrounding an unknown creature. Edward Gillette described this creature about 40 to 30 to 40 feet in length as long as a telephone pole with a large bucket for a head. Later in his book he said that the horses that were in the nearby ranches were very nervous around the lake and so were the natural wildlife. Never before had he seen this. Local ranchers started to talk amongst themselves and started to share what they had seen. A creature that resembled an alligator or a crocodile with a more slender body, with paddles for feet and a high ridge spiny back. One of the friends of the ranchers came back from a safari trip in Africa and informed the ranchers he'd seen similar behaviors between the local wildlife and those of the safari. They avoided the water line where predators like crocs or other predators were present. They seemed to be the same behaviors along the lake's shorelines. One rancher told a story to Mr. Gillette about how he seen a white-tailed deer get turned asunder by the beast throwing parts of the deer high upon the shoreline. He was shocked on how easy it was to see a monster just shred the deer's hide and then remove chunks of flesh of the animal while it was being dragged into the murky depths of Lake Desmet. There was even more terrifying account than that of Edward Gillette's creature named Smetty. The tale of an older nature had surfaced. The crows spoke of a story of a beautiful Native American woman near 
down near the shoreline with her baby in a propose, cleaning freshly killed rabbits in the lake's waters. Feeling safe, she placed her papoose close to the water so she could watch her baby sleeping. She turned to hear a noise on the shoreline, and all of a sudden, Smitty bursts out of the water, grabs the papoose with the baby inside of it, and then dragged the baby to his death into the belly of the beast. Other accounts in the 60s say Mosasaurus, a water-dwelling reptile that lived 65 million years ago. Most of the earlier descriptions match this creature although some still think it's a plesiosaur that lived at the same time. Let's try to explain how this creature got here in the first place. We need to go back 65 million years into the past during the late Cretaceous period. Wyoming was underwater by the Western Interior Seaway, also called the Cretaceous Seaway, the Niobara Sea, and the North American Inland Sea. It was a large inland sea that existed during the mid to late Cretaceous period, splitting the continent of North America into two land masses, Laramidia to the west and Appalachia to the east. The ancient sea stretched from the Gulf of Mexico and through the middle of the modern day countries of the United States and Canada, meeting with the Arctic Ocean to the north. At its largest, the western interior seaway stretched from the Rockies to the Appalachians in the east, some 621 miles wide. At its deepest, it may have been only 2,624 or 624 feet deep, shallow in terms of seas. The Western Interior Seaway divided across the Dakotas and retreated south towards the Gulf of Mexico. The sunken, regressive phase of the Western Interior Seaway is sometimes called the Prairie Seaway. Once the water retreated south, it is likely that this is where the few of the Mosasaurus got trapped in what we now call Lake DeSmit. During the time of this inner seaway, many aquatic creatures live there. Some, to name a few, the Megalodon, meaning big tooth, an extinct species of shark that lived in Wyoming. Northosaurus, the Plesiosaurus, Plesiosaurus, and of course, Smitty, the Mosasaurus. So with the information that we can see, is how this may be plausible. Whether you're fishing, camping, or just taking a stroll, remember to look at from the shoreline. Smitty, Maybe looking back at you. Now, what do you think? Can Lake DeSmith actually hold a creature of that size or a series of species of creatures known as Mosasaurus all this time? What do you think? I'm